Hello, and welcome to this Getting Started with WKO5 tutorial. My name is Tim Cusick, and I'll be walking you through the initial setup process today. I'm going to break today's presentation down into two portions. One, a quick presentation of some of the overlay and layouts of WKO5, and then I'm actually going to do a live demo. Let's start with the basic overlay or layout of WKO5. Pretty simple process. Let's just come up with some common names so that as we go through things, we'll know what they are. This top box up here is known as the hero bar because we have the hero metrics, the things that you like to see, the kind of summary KPI data for athletes. The hero bar does have some control and functions, including a help function on it. To the right hand side here, this gray square, we call the right hand explorer or often the RHE. This bar going down the middle, we call the navigation bar, and that's because you'll be doing most of your navigation from that bar. And this big screen area here where you see chart and reports, we refer to that as the data screen. Yes, we like to keep it all pretty simple. Let's drill down a little bit on the navigation bar. I will demo all this, but it just helps a little bit to understand how this works. In the navigation bar, you have these slight separations or segments here. So in the first section, area one, you have workouts and segment selection. This is a fixed area the user cannot edit, and you will use it to toggle workouts and segments open. In section two, we have insights and calendar. Um, we'll take a look at that insights and calendar section. Again, this is a fixed section. You cannot edit it, but you can select Insights and Calendar from this section. And finally, we have Section Area 3, and this is the User Editable Selection. This is where you will, through the selection of views, have a group of dashboards available to navigate through and to look at and utilize data. Let's drill down a little bit on the Right Hand Explorer, or RHE, and Data Ranges. There are three sections available here. Um, there's more, but three key functions, I guess, four key functions. First, we have a filter and search range. Then we have the sports selection range. This is very important because this allows you to uh, select which sports you want in your data. If you're a multi-sport athlete and you run or you swim or you ride and you row or whatever it is, you can select all data or specific data formats. I will demo that for you shortly. Here we have the selection of our default time ranges. Um, you can see which is selected because it's highlighted. And on the bottom, we have some basic controls. You can add custom time ranges or delete existing time ranges. And then we have this little gear wheel, which will allow us to set KPI information, which I'll demo later. Now, we also have a left-hand explorer, or LHE. And this is where we'll see workouts and actually segments. Here I have workouts selected as a demo, so this toggles on and off. If you want your left-hand explorer open, select workout or segments. Our new smart segments are a pretty cool function. And if you want to close that, you just toggle off. Click back on workouts and it will close. We have a filter and search, which I'm going to demo how it works. And then, of course, based on whether you select workouts or segments, you have a list of workouts and segments. Same idea here, you have some controls going on in the bottom where you can add or delete workouts or segments and you can set your KPI information. Now, an important first step is how do you get data into WKO5? If you've just downloaded WKO, it's a pretty simple process. In the initial install, it will actually ask you if you want to sync. If you did not go through that process, all you need to do is click on your name and that will open this athlete details page here, Training Peaks Athlete line. Just click on Edit. It'll produce this little UI. Put in your Training Peaks credentials. It will validate. This little line here says username and is validated. And then you can select the athlete. If you have a coach's account, put in your coach's account credentials, and it will show all your athletes in this drop-down list, all that you can select and utilize in WKL. Pretty simple process. If you're more of a single user and you just are using, you know, you have a training Garmin or Wahoo or whatever your device is, simply plug it in, wait a couple of seconds, this UI will pop up. 
um, you can then select the athlete you want to direct this towards. You have the option of always associating this device and don't ask again. So yes, this is my Garmin. I select yes. I can always edit that from athlete details. Now every time I plug it in, it will just auto sync. It's not even going to ask me. But in this first version, it's going to ask you. So click number three, import. Those are the two simple ways to get data into WKO. Now a little bit of background before we jump into the demo. WKO5 is built on the idea of trying to make data uh, utilization, data expression, data viewing easy. And basically we start with charts and report. A chart or a report is a summarized view of information. Users can select, edit, and build charts and reports. Pretty simple process. I think everybody knows what a chart and report is. Then we have dashboards. A dashboard is a selection of multiple charts and reports grouped together for a purpose, often to offer a well-rounded view of select data or data results. The user can select, edit, and build dashboards. And finally, and probably the most important is, we have views. And a view is a selection of multiple dashboards grouped together to give the user a holistic view of the athlete or situation. And of course, views can be selected, edited, and you can build views. So let's keep it simple, right? You have charts and reports in WKO. Put a bunch of charts and reports together in a dashboard. Now you have a dashboard. Put a bunch of dashboards together for a purpose, and now you have a view. And the system pretty much works like that. It's all view driven. You can choose views. It's a pretty simple process. Again, I'm going to demo this. All you need to do is select the small down arrow to the right of the navigation bar. This little UI will pop up and you can see it's choose an existing view. Select that and it will open this little uh, athlete view bar. You can select the filter of the view library, which WKO team supplies for you. Or if you've built some custom ones, you could select my views, the custom ones that you've built. You will get a list of those views and you could edit those views, what they look like. Again, I'll demo this in the little gear wheel on the bottom. Okay, with that little bit of background, let's jump into the WKO4 demo. Okay, let's get to the actual demo. Quick refresher, this is your hero bar, this is your nav bar, this is your right-hand explorer, and this is your data screen. Okay, let's start by talking about the hero bar. The hero bar is the place where you can see the current metrics of your selected athlete. We have PMC or performance management chart metrics here and power duration curve metrics here. There are a couple of controls that you can access from the um, hero bar. Here we have our preferences. So WKO5 preferences, metric English, day, sport type. Here you can also set your download from Training Peaks. I have mine set to manual, so it doesn't download and change my data during the presentation, but you should set yours to once every hour. That'll keep your data nice and updated. Um, this is the manual sync button, can be triggered anytime, just push it. And this is the help button. We have an excellent WKO5 getting started guide. If you click that, it'll really help you get rolling with WKO5. The other function that we have is athlete management. So the reality is if you hover over the athlete name, you'll see that not only does the name light up, but I get this small down arrow. If I click that small down arrow and I happen to have multiple athletes, um, those athletes will show up on this list. Now, the reality is I can filter these athletes by names. Now this is gonna change the athlete when I click on all athletes. So I could look at a separate athlete now, if you look at the drop down, I have all athletes selected in all four. Now I'm going to select, um, me, well, actually, it's best to select Joe Ryder out of that list. How do you get the athlete filters? Pretty simple process, right? You have to go to athlete details and simply tag the athlete with the filter that you want. How do you get to athlete details? Well, if you notice that Joe Ryder, the name lights up when I hover over it. If I click on it, and here's all the athlete details, including all the new metrics that are available in WKO5, 
But if I want that athlete to fit in a filter, I just enter a tag. So I'm using test. Notice test auto completes, so it's been utilized already. Now that athlete is tagged. So go back to my training here. Now if I use the athlete filters and select test, I have Jane Ryder. Oops, should have done that alphabetically. And I have Joe Ryder. So my test athletes are in that filter. This is highly useful for coaches because you can tag by sport type your mountain bikers and your road bikers or, or track cyclists. You can tag by active and current or old because I know a lot of co longtime coaches have a lot of old athletes that they don't get rid of the data. So the reality is you have ways to compartmentalize that. In the hero bar, anything you click over will be highlighted as you can see. So if something highlights, it means you can click on it. So let's take a look at CTL. Well, by clicking on it, I bring up this small UI and here's where I can set my CTL constant. But we also have alerting systems. So warn means it turns yellow and alert means it turns red. Right now I have it saying warn if uh, it's less than my CTL is less than 40 or greater than 100 and alert if it's less than 25 and more than 145. So let's say I wanted the alert to be, I want to get a red alert if this athlete goes over 105. So I change that to 105 and you notice the CTL has gone red. Nice little system of alerts and alert management. Now, all these sections, the sections, like the hero bar and the right-hand explorer, are adjustable. We want to be able to make sure that you can configure WKO5 to be what you want. So let's say you don't want as much space in your hero bar, you want more in your data screen. If you just hover over the edge here, you can drag it up once and it snaps to the medium position. Here you see the, you know, a slightly smaller data hero bar, um, but more screen space has been supplied. If I really wanted it small, I could snap it all the way down. Now I lose my metrics, right? The, the PMC and the power duration curve metrics, but I get a lot more screen space. Up to you as far as manageability, whatever works for your comfort. For the sake of this demo, I'm gonna do it wholly open. I have to uh, be honest, I use the mid-range position. I like a little more data screen, but I'm gonna do it with it wholly open so we can see changes and things that are occurring up top. That's pretty much the functions of your hero bar. Next, let's talk about your right-hand explorer. So here we have the right-hand explorer. We have ranges in here. So all ranges is, again, the default selection. And you can actually drop down. And if I've created ranges, which I have some unique ranges in here, I could just look at user ranges. And that would just show me the unique ranges that I have set up for um, demonstration or utilization purposes. Here is your sport type picker. It's very important that you get used to this and utilizing this. This really controls which sport types are being compiled into the data of multi-sport charts. So let's say I did not want um, cycling, for example. I could take cycling out. You can see everything's gonna reconfigure. Um, this athlete pretty much has all cycling data, so we really don't have much data anymore. Um, and I, of course, I can put cycling back in. Um, this is a great way to use and to review, particularly now that we have running power and, and new swim data and things like that. It really allows you to see the contribution of the sport type into the data metric. If it's dark, it's selected, and this is all selected. And this little all files icon selects all the data uh, immediately. Now, here we have our list of ranges. For UWKL4 users, you notice this is much cleaner. There's no longer the key performance indicators, that little bit of data. We didn't take it away. We simply have made it customizable. So the reality is if you see this little gear wheel and every uh, explorer and section has the little gear wheel so you can customize your data. If I just click the little down arrow, you see here it says show distance, duration, and work, and show actual dates. So let's just say I want to see the actual dates of the sections or the, the time ranges. That opens it up. And let's say I want to see distance, duration, and work in those time ranges. 
that gives you more KPI. So again, the goal here is that it's customizable for you. Now I'm going to go back and go to my single lines. It's very easy to make a customized date like or a customized date range. I can hit plus. I might make this, um, you know, to let's say this was a date range to last month. I'm just making it up. I'm going to call this test range. And you'll notice it's already showed up in my right hand range and it's available for use. You can just click on whatever you want. That's pretty much the function of the right hand explorers. So um, should give you a pretty good start there. Okay, now let's dig into the navigation bar. If you remember, the navigation bar is three sections, the workout and segment section, the insight and calendar section, and the user navigation section. So let's start with workouts as an example. So if you notice again, it highlights when I hover over, meaning it's selectable. So if I want to access my workouts, I simply click on workouts. Now, I need to work out with some data here. Um, great. If you notice a left hand explorer kind of pops up, it's hover over. So again, it's all adjustable, right? If I want that to stay open, I'm going to drag, drag the edge and I'm going to open it all the way so it stays open. Now notice it's totally open and it's staying open um, and no longer hovers over. If I want more screen space and I want to be able to use the hover over, I would drag it back. I'm not going to do so now because I want to demo something else first. And it will be hover over, so it'll be a small bar and will open when you hover over. Now you notice that there is KPI information in here. Again, it's adjustable. If I don't want to show all that information, I can simply take it out. You saw I just took workout title out. I might want workout title. Again, customizable and up to you. Now, let me demo that if I want it to be hover over, I might drag it to, eh, that's about, I like to see the date and the sport type. So now I have a lot more screen size as you see, but as I hover over it opens and it's still fully functional. In the left hand explorer, we have a filter again. So a filter it has all the same date ranges and time ranges, including the custom ranges that I've built. Now, all filters, and this happens for all date ranges, anytime you see a filter is also a powerful search tool. So let's say I wasn't looking for date ranges, I was looking for um, SST workouts. So you notice I dragged over and I entered the word SST, and what it's done, it's found all my SST workouts. Since I turned off my titles, that's a little hard to see. So I'm going to turn the titles back on. And you can see all of these are different forms of SST work that I've either completed or not completed. Um, so therefore, that's a very powerful search mechanism. And if you don't want to search, you just want to use time ranges, just simply click back. And now I can use the last 30 days. Excellent. Now, how do I close the workouts and return to the athlete view? Simply toggle it off. Segments work the same. I can simply select segments, same, and you'll see here different segments and reviews. I do segments in a different function. Uh, I'll show you segments in um, a separate video, so I don't want to go too deep into that, but this is how you open and close them. Okay, back to the athlete level. These next two areas, insight and calendars, it's important to note you as the user cannot edit these. Insights is where we're going to utilize as new ideas in coaching and how to help you understand good and bad training and things like that come available. We're going to push certain charts and images up into this section to share with you and to be able to, you know, have you utilize. A calendar is a simple calendar. Um, allowing you to view training and it matches your training peaks account compliance colors. So if you've done a workout in training peaks and you had a workout plan or a plan that you're following and it's green and you do the, I'm sorry, if you had a plan and you did the right amount of work, it goes green. And then you also could get a yellow and orange. I think most of the users will be familiar with that scheme. And this is just a simple summary. It 
um, calendar that gives you some understanding of workout load, smaller circles or less, bigger circles or more, um, allows you to just call, kind of follow along with compliance. The final section of the navigation bar is the user configurable view. Remember, it, as stated in the presentation, we have charts and reports. A group of charts and reports form a dashboard. We're viewing a dashboard right now. And a group of dashboards form a view. So this is a view, this section three, from the little uh, indicator here over to the right, the little separator here over to the right, we have different dashboards all put together in a view. This is a great place for you to start and to explore around different information and dashboards that you can see in WKO5. But let's say you did wanna look at a slightly different view. We do put in some views for you for the start. You can create your own over time once you learn how but it's best to start by choosing an existing view. You can see how I did that. I simply clicked on the little down arrow to the right of the navigation bar. I'm choosing an existing view and I get a list of views. Like all UIs, I can edit that list to have more information or less through the little gear wheel. I also have a filter. So right now this is a selection of my views that I might have. You can use the view library. These are pre-configured views supplied by the team here at WKO. That should give you a really good starting point. There are basic and advanced views available to you. By default, you will start with the basic view via sport type. So what we're seeing in the background is actually WKO5 basic cycling view. And once you get used to the information there, and you want to customize or learn a little more, you can select the advanced view simply by clicking on it. Once you click on it, the view is selected, the uh, UI will close, and you will have that new view uh, here and available for you. I highly recommend that you start with the basic views, get used to it, and then um, look at different views. You do have the ability to add additional dashboards the same process, you can click down and then you can create a new dashboard or add an existing dashboard. I highly recommend during your early trial, you just simply work with the dashboards and the same process, you can go to the dashboard library and you'll sign all types of dashboards pre-built and ready for you. Okay. Well, that gives us a good understanding of the navigation bar. Let's talk about the data screen size. So in the data screen, um, two things are a little different um, than WKL4, and hopefully these will be some nice little features. I'm gonna use this um, as an example. If you notice when we're looking at a chart size, um, and you've probably seen it as I was clicking through some different charts, you have different size charts and reports. You can certainly see it here. Two things. All charts and reports are configurable by size. I just drag the corner. You can make it whatever size you want. So by dragging and changing size, if you like bigger charts or a bunch of smaller charts, that's totally, you know, clearly something that you can do. So go ahead and reconfigure the sizing. If you want more of a, a full chart view or a small chart view, that's going to be up to you. So configure your screens as you see fit and for what best works for you. But I would also say, and I'm just gonna reduce this down to last week to kind of make the point. Um, when you're looking at charts and reports, let's say, well, wow, you know, guys, why did you make such a small report here? This is kind of hard to see. If you notice how the header uh, highlights when I hover over it, if I double click it, it's gonna expand and dock this chart. So all I do is double click. You see now it's in your dock over here and I get the expanded view. I can always go back to my power duration model um, and this chart, the expanded view, the zoomed chart, the docked chart will remain there until I'm done with it. If I want I can simply drag it and drop it off or I can hide it, um, that chart, so it comes out of my dashboard. I'm sorry, it comes out of my doc. Pretty simple process on how to manage that. Um, it gives you an easy way then, if you think about your building your data screens, you can use some things big and some things large. 
<clears throat> the things I look at every day, I want a little larger, right? But those items that I just want to check every once in a while, I want small so I can see. And then if I'm like, wow, I really want to drill down, like let's say that same chart at 90 days, right? Looks pretty busy there. But if I zoom it real quick, um, we'll see that, oh, great. Now I'm probably only looking at my FTP accuracy calculation once in a while. So just know that the reality is, um, yeah, it's not something I'm looking at all given time. So I like it as a small chart available to me when I want to zoom in. That completes this demo. Hopefully you get up and running and, and are exploring WKL5. There are plenty of additional help resources. Make sure you use the help resource button. It will take you to our quick start guide. Lots of great answers there. Thanks for using WKO5.